Tonight on Channel 6 News Weekend Edition. Words must be met with action. We're hearing more from authorities on the Odessa shooting and learn how the shooter is connected to Central Texas. Plus the latest on Hurricane Dorian as it reaches the Bahamas. And how a newly renovated temple home is giving local boys new hope. We'll talk about it in this week's Central Texas Spotlight. Channel 6 News Weekend Edition starts right now. We want people of the Permian Basin to know that all of Texans stand with you and embrace you at this time of challenge. We are here today and we'll be here every day until this community is pieced back together. But we know that words alone are inadequate. Words must be met with action. You're hearing from Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who is in West Texas today, addressing the state and the country following yesterday's deadly mass shooting. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. We're just now learning that the 36 year old gunman in yesterday's mass shooting once lived in McLennan County. He's identified as 36 year old Seth Artor. Records show that he once lived in both Lorena and Waco. Records also indicate that he was enrolled at Texas State Technical College in Waco in 2005. He also has a criminal record in McLennan County where he faced a misdemeanor charge in 2001. Also coming in today, we now know that eight people, including the shooter, are dead in what police are calling a random act of violence. One of those victims died this morning at the hospital. A 17-month-old baby who was injured is still recovering after being airlifted to a hospital in Lubbock. Out of the 22 people injured, three are law enforcement officers. The rampage happening after the gunman shot a deputy during a traffic stop and fled the scene, shooting people along the way and later stealing a mail delivery truck before being shot and killed near a movie theater. NBC's Chris Pallone has more. There's an active shooter. Two senior law enforcement officials tell NBC News the shooter had been recently fired from his job. His name is Seth Ator, a 36-year-old white male. It started when state troopers pulled him over on Interstate 20 Saturday. Ator opened fire and took off on a 10-mile rampage, shooting people at 15 different locations. Please understand this is, is a, a different type of active shooter that we were involved with because he was mobile. At one point, he killed a letter carrier and stole her van to continue the attack. He was pulling up to the side of our car. Shauna Saxton came face to face with the killer and lived. I feel so lucky that I was not hurt and I'm so, I'm so sad inside because I, I knew what was coming towards people and I couldn't help them. In all, seven people died. More than 20 are being treated for gunshot wounds, including a 17-month-old girl shot in the mouth. Oh my God. Police caught up with the shooter at a movie theater and killed him. All we know is we heard a lot of other gunshots going off. Police say Ator used an AR style rifle to carry out the attack. How he got it is still under investigation. Chris Pallone, NBC News. The identities of all of the victims have not yet been released, but Governor Greg Abbott says he is working with legislators to find a solution to end the violence. We need solutions that will keep guns out of the hands of criminals like the killer here in Odessa, while also ensuring that we safeguard Second Amendment rights. And we must do it fast. President Trump, who is at FEMA headquarters today addressing Hurricane Dorian, had this to say to reporters in response to the shootings. Well, we're looking at a lot of different things. We're looking at a lot of different bills, ideas, concepts. It's been going on for a long while, background checks. I will say that for the most part, sadly, if you look at the last four or five, going back even five or six or seven years, for the most part, as strong as you make your background checks, they would not have stopped any of it. So it's a big problem. It's a mental problem. It's a and today, FBI agents spent time at a home in West Texas serving a warrant on a home they say is connected to a vehicle in the mass shootings. Now, here's a look at that scene. They spent much of the day there. We are still waiting on more information about what they've learned. 
The suspect in the string of shootings in Odessa made a second stop in a neighborhood where witnesses say he stole a mail delivery truck and then shot and killed the driver. One woman says she was at the Odessa HEB when she got a terrifying call about it. Shopping at the Odessa HEB when she received a horrifying phone call. My mother-in-law called me and she told me about there was shootings where she saw a car with bullet holes in it on the side of it. And she told me just be careful coming in and out of HEB. She then quickly called her brother to make sure he was in a safe place. Turns out he saw the whole thing. When I was on the phone with him, he told me that um, he was coming in from the backyard and um, he heard a pop, which was the gunshot. And so he went closer to the front door. There's a window um, in our living room and you can see right out the street. He looked out and he saw, he saw that white van and then this little car. He said that that man was grabbing her somehow and she was saying, no, no, please. And he shot her in the hip and then um, she fell to the ground and she was still alive and then he shot her a second time and I think that's I think he got her in the head. She said that's when he hopped in the mail carrier and proceeded to speed away and that's when neighbors from all ends ran to her rescue. One of our next door neighbors is a nurse and she was checking her polls and talking to her but she passed just right then and there. Shortly after, officers and DPS spanned across Adams Street to order neighbors to stay in their homes for their safety and to begin investigation purposes. That woman on the phone went on to say when she returned home from HEB, she did see the woman's body outside, along with several police officers taking photos for the investigation. La Paz Purchase Funeral Home in Odessa is heartbroken over the shootings. They want to do their part to help in whatever way possible, so they are offering funerals at no cost to the families of those who lost loved ones. The office manager says it's not about business, but about giving back to the community and helping when and where you're able. That's what we do, and we help and assist in the celebration of that individual's life. Our director told me, prepare for this weekend. It's going to be something hard. We're going to go through something, and I prepared. I was ready with my phone. I was ready with everything. Mm -hmm. My staff mm -hmm. is ready to go, and uh, I didn't know something was coming. American Heritage Cemetery Funeral Home will also be offering free funerals. We have contact information for both business, businesses up on KCENTV.com. The city of Odessa says a reunification center for the victims of the shooting is being set up. A vigil will be held tonight from 6 to 7 at UTPB. Mid-Cities Church has also announced they will be having special prayer services for the victims and their families. A GoFundMe has also been set up to help with medical expenses for the 17-month-old baby injured as well. Well, it's time now for a first check of our weather. Meteorologist Bill Heckey is standing by with the details. Hey, Bill. Hello, Imani, and hello to you. We've had a warm day, some spotty shower. All right, thanks, Bill. President Trump's trade war with China will hit home for many Americans in the weeks and months to come. That's because new tariffs are going into effect on the products you use every day. Everything from food to school supplies. NBC's Jolene Kent reports on how much it could cost you. Welcome back. Underserved young boys in East Temple will now have a place to build friendship, seek guidance, and learn valuable life skills. After more than a year of renovations, the 411 house is open and ready to serve the community. The house, which was once owned by a civil rights activist, was purchased by Kim White, founder of Bridge East Temple. She turned it into a safe place where young boys in the community can come for mentorship, a hot meal, or just relax. And so um, we want to offer them different experiences and opportunities and also the chance to have a mentor and to have someone kind of walk them through life because it's something that we all could use. To hear more about how this house will help neighborhood boys and how Chip and Joanna Gaines is supporting the effort, catch the full report coming up tonight at 10. Well, Dorian is pounding down on the Bahamas this evening after just being classified as a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane. The storm currently packs sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and is expected to pound the islands with up to two days with heavy rain, high waves, and damaging winds before taking aim at the U.S. mainland. 
while not expected to strike Florida, the NHC cautioned residents to remain on high alert. We'll be right back.